And um, I have a couple adjustments to the agenda. Is are there any? Is anyone else have an adjustment to the agenda at all? No, I'm good. Okay. So my adjustments are um, last uh, at our last meeting we had uh, appointing someone to the solid central Vermont Solid Waste Management District. Um, Eileen Wildman and I forgot to put it on. We did we, we postponed that because I wasn't quite hadn't gotten a confirmation from Eileen, uh, and then I forgot to put it on this agenda. Um, so it's not a major thing. I think we'll just we'll add it as an adjustment. And then I want to um, just talk a little bit about um, oh it's called the ARPA and somewhere I wrote down what that stands for. Um, but I can't find it. Um, it's the American Recovery something, something, Recovery, something. Yeah, Plan Act. Thank you, Paul. American Recovery Plan Act. Um, and the town is uh, in line for a, a pretty good chunk of money for that. Um, so I wanted to just um, talk a little bit, of, a little bit about that. Just kind of introduce what this thing is about. And uh, um, Bonnie Wanagar, the executive director from um, the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission has offered to come and um, uh, meet with us at a select board meeting to talk more about it. So um, we'll probably set that up for a future meeting. Um, any public comment at all? Okay, hear any? Um, so, do I hear a motion to approve the bills to the town? So moved. I uh, guess I'll second it. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Um, and then do I hear a motion to approve the minutes to the April 26, 2021 select board meeting? Uh, so moved. I'll second that. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. So, um, we are ready for the town clerk's report. I just received an email in this afternoon. It is from Secretary of State's office and mm -hmm. they need to have an updated list of the select board members. And okay. the one that they had, it had Michael as the chair, then Brian and Paul. Okay. So I can just remove Brian and put Chris in there. Mm -hmm. And it yep. doesn't matter who's who's number two and who's number three for members? No. no. Okay. No. Okay. And the dog licenses are slowing down. We're down uh, to 50 or so that are still unregistered. Mm -hmm. But other than that, just, I think those are going well. Yeah, great. And um, in my spare time, I have been playing in the vault, getting used uh. to the card files, and then going to the deeds and the mortgage and all of that stuff so mm -hmm. getting a little more familiar with everything right yeah there's a lot of stuff in there it goes way there back too yeah. <laughs> there is yeah. and seeing as it's slow i am going to start putting the dog licenses into the nimric system okay mm -hmm. so brandy is helping you understand that a little bit better Yes, and there's also Penny, is it Penny? Penny at Nimrick that's been very helpful to me. Oh, good. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's about what I've got. Okay. All right. Um, I see Brandy. Oh, yes, Diana. I just wanted to. Your, my, your, oops. I guess he got, I think Chris is going to join us here. Your mic is muted, Diana. Okay. Um, okay. <clears throat> Robin ran the election for the uh, special town meeting. We had a whopping turnout of 1%, mm -hmm. of which uh, more than half approved. <laughs> so that, that went quite smoothly. Mm -hmm. well, that's all I have. <laughs> okay. Um, Let's see, Brandy, are you ready to give us a town treasurer's report? Or would you like us to come back to you? 
Diana, Robin, could you just ask Brandy? She said to she... come back, please. Come back, okay. I didn't hear that. Okay, we'll do that. Uh, let's see, actually, um, why don't we go on to, um, uh, let's see, well, um, what to do here. Um, why don't we meet with Tegan? Um, and so um, I just want to briefly um, introduce Tegan Martel. She um, contacted me and was interested in, in filling a position um, in the town, um, either as the uh, select board assistant or the health officer. And um, Brave. yes, I kind of warned her away from the health officer. <laughs> That would sour you on any other town position for your rest of your life, I think. Um, so, and and we both thought that it would be a good way for her to get to know a little bit about the town and some of the people in the town and some the town's business by being the select board assistant. Um, you'll get both the good and the bad uh, in that role, um, as far as what you see happening in town. Yes, you um, will. That, not to be a pessimist, but uh, sometimes it isn't pleasant, and sometimes it is. So, um, so Tegan, I don't know if you have anything that you'd like to say, or if anybody has any questions for Tegan. Um, I, I guess know, just I've tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. Yeah. Hi, everyone. It's nice to meet you. Um, yeah, I had a great conversation, kind of about those two positions, and talked about how my I am a social worker and have a very eventful job and it sounded like- Oh, so you're familiar <laughs> with this stuff then, okay. Yeah, she's but in sure. order to kind of get used to the town and everything that the select board assistant was probably the best fit. Um, and I'm really, I think it's super important to help out with our local communities and everything, which is why I'm interested. Um, yeah, any, uh, I'm happy to answer any questions. Mm -hmm. There's anything in particular. So what I mentioned to Tegan for maybe for starters is just to, um, after this meeting, um, maybe taking over uh, doing the uh, notes to the meeting and then the, uh, the draft um, for the meeting minutes, that would be a good place to start. And then I know uh, our former um, select board assistant would help out with her different projects that we were working on. They might do research or um, or just you know kind of come up with the information that the select board would need so that's another possibility Tegan I'm wondering how many um, I think the former select board assistant would spend about four hours a week that's what we kind of allotted to them um, and they were paid um, an hourly wage for that so I'm wondering um, you know with you're sounds like you're already working full time. How many hours do you think you would be able to um, devote to the position? My evenings right now are pretty, pretty free and I'm happy to do that kind of like after work. So I think okay. four is, is very reasonable. Four is a good, good. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and then I guess, I guess it would be up to the select board to, um, figure out how much we should pay you on an hourly rate. Um, do you have any idea at all what, what you would like to get in that position? I don't, kind of okay. talking about pay is not one of my strong suits. <laughs> all right, well, it's not one of mine either. What, what have we been doing uh, historically when uh, Laura, Laura was there? I think um, Laura was making about $15 an hour. Okay, is that, maybe. is that reasonable? Yeah, I think that's reasonable. Okay, um, maybe we'll check in. Brandy could probably find the exact amount for us at some point. You don't have to do it right now, Brandy, but um, we'll kind of figure out where we started Laura at um, or where she ended up. I'm not sure which, but. Um, Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah. Or was that 14.55? Okay, so I think 15 is a- I think 15 an hour is a reasonable. Is that something agreeable to you? So do we need a motion for the hiring? Uh, or is yes, it an appointment? We, or? 
So I'll, yes, I'll make a motion that we appoint um, um, it's Tegan, right? Uh, yes. As our as our assistant at the rate of fifteen dollars an hour, and it'll just go up with the town employees annually whenever that happens. Okay. All right. Chris will right. second that motion. Second that. <clears throat> uh, any more discussion about the motion from anyone? Okay. I'm um, hearing hearing none. Um, all those in favor, uh, please say aye. 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 Sounds like you're you're hired. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, if, if uh, Tegan's interested in being uh, um, health officer, that's a conversation we can have, you know, because it sounds like you have some experience with kind of the challenges that you'd have. I have a lot as having 33 years as a code enforcement officer, so <laughs> I kind of know the field you're in. Yeah. Yes, Diana. I was just going to recommend that, that uh, uh, on the on town the website, website there's lots of... of uh, uh, Past, past minutes, minutes you can look at that. to learn how how it goes. Right. Yeah. And, I, and I thought I would send Tegan like some of the uh, notes versus the final minutes just to kind of get a sense of how things get pared <laughs> down some um, in that process. We try to keep the the minutes to about three pages and it um, and kind of walk a fine line between giving just the absolute essential information, which is what's required which in the minutes, required. And, then, and then trying to make it somewhat informative for town residents to have an understanding of what the issue was or what the discussion was. Um, you know, some people came, they said some things, and then they left. Uh, that right. kind of <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. And then but, just to, to double check, would this town meeting's minutes be, am, am I starting now? Uh, no, Diana will do it to, tonight. So, um, but so for the next meeting. Okay, sounds yeah. good. Yeah. Um, and someday we'll be in person again. Yes. Yeah. Maybe fairly soon. We'll see. Um, in the meantime, so okay. I'm going to need to get um, a W two a W four from her filled out. Um, so, if somebody can send me or if um, yeah, just give me her email and I can scan it, send it to her and have, and she can mail it back to me. Okay, okay. That way I can get it into the system. All right, I'll, I'll do also, that. Yeah, What's, there'll have to be a, a process for her getting into the building if she wants to take the minutes from here or if she wants to take the minutes from home. That's uh, something we can help you figure out. <laughs> and also, um, I think I mentioned this when we were speaking, um, Tegan, but the, um, the meeting is uh, um, filmed or recorded by HCTV. So on their website, um, usually within three or four, five days, um, the meeting gets posted on the website. Um, so that if, if, you're, if there's ever a question in the notes that you took about a certain whatever if there's ever a question you can you can check it out um, by watching the recording um, good okay um, anything else at all for any other questions Tegan or any other questions for Tegan I don't have any questions but thank okay. you <laughs> okay. well thank you yeah maybe, thank you maybe Keith. we should set up a time to thank meet you. And welcome. Glad to have have your interest in the town. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that sounds like a, a great idea, Diana. <laughs> yeah. Well, Brandy's going to get your email so she can set something up. Right. Yeah. Okay, so um, let's move on. Um, we'll jump back to the town treasurer's report. Mute myself here. Yeah, I think, the, and the other mics are muted, so we shouldn't. All right, let me grab. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to grab that. So for our AP warrant. Um, 
for bills over the last two weeks, totaling $14,351.75. Our payroll warrant. Totaling $9,078.66. Um, so over the last two weeks for income, we took in for delinquencies, $5,697.59. Bringing us to a total of $95,724.76 for delinquencies. Mm -hmm. um, income also out of cash receipts, we took in fleet permits. We have, there was library donations. There was restor, uh, records restoration income. Also another conservation uh, donation. Okay. Copies, dog licenses, um, land records recording, co land copies and prepaid taxes, totaling $2,005 even. That left us in the negative, so I did a $10,000 transfer from the money market over into the checking today. Mm -hmm. um, other goodies. So we gotta finish up the green up as soon as we get the Central Vermont Solid Waste in. Um, we just received the tire invoice today. Um, so once we finish getting the, uh, the, the solid waste, I'll finish up the green up grant. Okay. Um, what else? How much did the tires oh, come to Brandy? I can't hear him. Oh, sorry. How, how much did the tires come to? We had quite a, quite a truckload. I remember right. If I didn't want to find out, it'd be right here. Don't, it, it doesn't matter. I was just curious. Don't, don't. So there was 69 tires. Um, he charged us $5 a piece, $345. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's 69 less tires on the side of the road in town. And there was $101 brought in that was paid for paid tires. Okay. Can you turn it back up, Robin? I'm so sorry. This whole echoing system is a... It's kind of interesting to listen to, but... <laughs> no, it's a cluster inside here. Uh, so it reminds me of some of the recordings I have. <laughs> I don't want it. It's like we're meeting back here. <laughs> so any questions for me? Um, yeah, I had a question. I'm just wondering, what's the difference? Um, I was looking at the do to, do from. Yeah. And um, I'm wondering, what's the difference between the highway do from to, from to, and the highway equipment reserve? Or, or maybe just what is the highway do from, do to fund? Yep. So since we have one checking account, we have 16 accounts, but they're all in one checking. So okay. the hundred and twenty thousand two hundred ninety-five dollars and ninety-four cents is what the highway has left for money to the end of the oh. fiscal year. Okay. Minus minus um, class four, uh, class two and three roads that we get from the state, and if the Swenson money is going to be going into the highway, the next one, or whether it's going to gravel. Okay. Um, and in the, the the highway equipment reserve is our her funds. I know what that, yeah, that's why yeah. I think my real question was what the highway fund was. Um, so when we when we um, get money from Swenson, um, a reimbursement, that goes right into the highway fund and then some of it goes into the highway reserve fund? Yes, the total yes. amount goes into the highway. 
Right. And then within the highway, we have expense accounts for the HERF and for the paving, and it gets transferred over from there. Okay, good. So you see the total amount from the Swensons in the highway, and then it gets dispersed. Okay, great. Good. Yeah. That was the only question I had. Any other questions about the financials from anybody? Do you want to move on to the... Um, the fuel bid and the mowing contract. Thought we'd do that. Um, kind of tag it right in because you're you're the overseer of those. So as far as the mowing, we put out a bid. We put out an RFP um, for a three-year contract. Um, the contractor that was chosen. Um, bid on a three-year contract um, so he would like you the select board to re reconsider the three-year term okay any thoughts from the select board i i have um some thoughts but i'd like to hear from either paul or chris first well i'll, I'll let other people speak but Based on what we've spoken about, why aren't we considering a three-year contract again? And I'm kind of back. Well, the last meeting we had discussed potentially having the town buy their own mower. The problem is we put an RFP out for a three-year contract. So, I mean, I think we're up against accepting the RFP as we sent it or declining all the honor, bids and resending. I think we have to honor our RFP, don't we? Right. Well, yeah, we could, we we could uh, terminate it if we chose to. I don't think that's a good idea. I think it's a really bad idea. I agree. Yeah. Um, I think it would be problematic to. Yeah. To, so it's just we, not fair to the bidders because they've kind of shown their cards. And then if you say, no, no, it's a one year, you know, but there it is. So I, I, I'd be inclined to stick with what we sent out if that's what everyone wants to do. I don't see a reason not to. Yeah, and and that, that's what I would prefer to. You know, I don't know how. I like the idea of the town owning a mower and hiring someone. I don't know how realistic that is. Um, and I don't know, you know, um, it could, obviously there could be pros and cons with that, but I do think, um, you know, that we should probably honor the three-year RFP also. So it sounds like we're in agreement on that. Um, I'll go ahead and make the motion to accept the three-year contract as proposed from uh, Brandy. Okay. Chris will second that. All right. Uh, any any more discussion? I have I have one one more question for Brandy about that. When you and Patty met with um, the per, is it doctor is it DNR? What is what is it the contractor exactly call his business? Dr. Property. Dr. Property. So it's Derek Richardson. Okay. So it's just Dr. Property, not property management or anything like that. I don't have it in front of me. I must, yes, yeah, there's more to it. Okay. I was trying to put it in the in our minutes from the last meeting and I, I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> the mowing person. <laughs> I knew it wasn't D and R, but. Um, I have a, a question and this is actually for Chuck. Chuck, if, if you're willing to think about this, do you think that if we had our own equipment, this is something that that your crew might be able to help us support or are we talking about another hire? Like a part-time hire? I'm afraid you'd be a part-time hire. Yeah, that's that's what I would anticipate. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if we, we'd have to hire somebody. It'd be a lot to ask the road crew to pick up mowing now. I, I don't think another. that that's, that, so I, yeah, I agree. I don't think that that's fair. So yeah. I think that we're talking about a part-time hire. So buying our own equipment is a great idea but if we can't support it, right. what's the point? Well, well we could, we're gonna just have to plan for it if you wanted to do that. I'm not sure we want to do that, but. It sounds like yeah. we can think about it over three years. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, we because could discuss it more. I mean, it's, an in, it's an interesting idea. It would be worth more discussion. You're gonna to have to think about transportation for that. Right, you gotta move the mower. There's a lot of things that go with it. You gotta have a trailer. You're gonna to have to have a truck to tow it with. Right. You have to pay Don't somebody. To, it, it's a lot of things come up. It's, it's nice to have a mower, but if we can't move it around, 
Right. Uh, and we're, and You're we going to have to have a weed whacker and then there'll be how you make fixing it. And, and right. That'd be a long so, ride and, on lawnmower all the way to West Woodbury. Yeah. yeah. Right, Unless so they went on the Ho Chi Minh Trail. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like a three-year contract is really the smart. I think so. I mean, we just aren't set up for it. And I think trying to pull it out of our hat, you know, just not going to be a fast right. thing. There's a lot to think about. Again, we could visit the issue and think it through and you get the total cost. But I'm not sure we would recreate it for what it's going to be done for by someone who does it all the time right it depends on the time scale and, and right. what we we can really work with but it's a conversation that's worth having but yeah i think that we have to honor a three-year contract and i think it gives us that flexibility okay so, um yeah. i think that we should should support it okay <clears throat> so brandy i have one more question um so did you and Patty talk with um, Derek about the uh, workman's comp and employees? I did. I made it very clear um, that the contract will be voided if there is somebody else on our property locations with him using the equipment. Okay. All right. Good. So we have a motion on the floor. Um, is there any more discussion at all? So all those in favor of um, awarding a three-year contract to uh, DR property, um, <laughs> I, as they say, um, say property aye. Property maintenance and lawn care. Okay, I'll say aye. Aye, aye. okay. Um, so that's unanimous, no one's opposed. Um, so good, so that's done. Um, so we've awarded that. The select board contract. will need to come in and sign the contract. Okay. I will also have Derek come in and sign the contract. Okay. It'll be on the table. There's tabs for the select board and Derek Richardson. Okay, great. And Thank probably you. the as soon, you, as soon as we can get in there, the better. Yes, okay. please. The contract states for May 15th starting time. All right. Thank you, Brandy. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So um, next, uh, kind of tagged with the town treasurer report is the uh, fiscal year 22 fuel bid um, to send out an RFP. Um, I just, I have one comment, Brandy, about the fuel bid. We should remove um, the diesel, the off-road diesel yeah. fr from that Every RFP because um, we've basically committed ourselves to Gillespie um, for the diesel fuel, um, you know, when they provided us with the above ground storage tank. So, um, so we should just probably remove that from the, from the RFP. So I have five vendors that are fuel vendors. Mm -hmm. Um, that I will email, mail the RFP to. Okay. There is a deadline for the contract. Or there's a deadline for the proposal, which is okay. June 24th. Um, mm -hmm. The select board will open them on June 28th. I will also be putting it on Front Porch Forum and our website. Um, and that way we save on advertising. We hit okay. the three ones and then I will send to these five vendors. Um, yeah. Okay. As long as that's um, okay with the select board. Yeah, that sounds fine. To me anyway. Um, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I agree. With um, that's right. I agree with that. That's the right approach. Okay. Did, did, did you want to try to have this resolved by the beginning of the fiscal year and on July 1st? Yes. <laughs> yes. I was on kind of June reading 20th, your your on June twenty eighth select board meeting. You will choose a vendor, and okay. it will be it will be um, up and running four seven one. Okay. Yep. All right. Sounds good. Any other comments or questions about the RFP for the fuel? And you know, usually I think historically the company that we've gone with is Gillespie's. Um, but you know we're we're bound by the purchasing policy to put it out for bid, um, and this is just for one year. 
we last year we put out a three-year option yeah there was no right. takers because yeah. the the gas fluctuates so much the fuel prices are um, so so that i think that, that it's only a, a year option okay all right yeah i was going to say that we we it looks like we've done this for for a three year in the past but i don't think that's the status of how we do this anymore i don't think that any company is going to and no, no one's going to bid on it to do that. no no, they don't want to commit themselves that far out with, when you never know what the price of fuel yeah, is going to be. It's, it's just too flexible. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I think that we have to expect a one year. We're going to have to turn this around every year. Yeah. Yep. yep. Where we are. Yeah. Yeah. Even one year, it's hard to predict. So. Right. Okay. Um, anything else for the town treasurer? I don't believe so. Okay. Any questions for Brandy at all? Or any? All right. Thank so, you, Brandy. Uh, yep. You're welcome. So next on the agenda is the town highway report. To well, uh, we've had a lot of rain, so we're behind on grading. Yep. But then the Cabot Road today, uh, Flat Street, the North Road, Wheeler Hill, ditch the backside of Wheeler Hill, um so which side is the back side south woodbury side south yeah woodbury the dog ponds road side okay yeah. um so that's pretty well cleaned up ready to be honed we're going to east hill tomorrow i hope um okay. i got a caller who's hoping that you do that too also <laughs> yeah well we were going to go there this morning but the cabinet road is in pretty rough shape and yeah East Hill is too, I know, but we figured we'd give it an extra day or two to dry out. Okay. So we're going to be up there in the morning. All right. Um, and I've instructed them to do all the roads up there. So mm -hmm. when we're done on the hill, we this side of the hill, this side of 14 should be pretty well done for okay. a while. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to the county road. County road would be good. Yeah. yeah that's in rough shape. It's in rough uh, shape. Yep. Yeah. Um, we got the new mower that's about ready to be put into use. Mm -hmm. um, Paul got us some nozzles, so we're, I thought they were going to wash some aprons today, but um, I didn't see anybody this afternoon, so I don't know what. Did they get stuff connected up? Are those going to work all right, Chuck? Yeah, yeah, we bought an adapter. Yeah, I thought there might be an issue because you have iron, if you have an NH hose thread, we have iron pipe for that size. That probably yeah. was the issue. Yeah, but we bought an adapter. They should. Well, okay. Maybe that was the problem. Maybe the adapter wasn't right. I don't know. Yeah, Tim. I, there's one at the fire station. Tim can grab if you need it. Um, okay. We I grabbed out too. So if you have to have it, it'll 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 convert from from uh, NH if that's your hose to iron pipe, which is the threads on the on the nozzle. Uh, I I was under the assumption that our pipe thread on the pipe, on the hose was inch and a half pipe. It could, if it is, and the nozzles should thread right on. Right, and like I say, they were they were working at it this morning when okay. I was over there, and then I got busy and worked for myself all day, and I didn't get back over there. But I'll find okay. out. Perfect. So are they going to use the hydrocedar, Chuck? To, to do the spraying with? No, they're going to use a chloride tank. A chloride tank. Okay, right. In okay. the back of the dump truck. Yep. Okay. Should work real good. We got mm -hmm. it. Everything's all set up, so it should work out real Great. good. Mm -hmm. And um, Greg and I were talking, and he's been concerned. He was concerned about it last fall, and he brought it up to me again this year about the snow machine trail coming out at the top of, at the end of the black top at the Cabot Road and going up the road right. across the quarry road. Mm -hmm. He says that's part of the problem why they can't keep that road so the trucks can get up and down it without them doing a lot of complaining. Uh -huh. Because when, when they bring a, the groomer and stuff out around there, it drops all the snow and then the snow machines come out. When they get after it, they spin and it, blows the sand off and okay and he's wondering if there's some way we could talk to the 
um, Snow Machine Club and see if we could do something different there. Yeah, we, we could talk. I think it's Stephen Gray um, from the Mountain Tamers. You know, when I talked to him um, this fall, he mentioned that's one stretch of road that they would really like to try to figure out what to do there. So um, we could get in touch with with him um, and uh, just let him know that it's, it is creating a problem for the road crew uh, maintaining the road, especially for the quarry trucks. Um, and uh, maybe that will kind of inspire the, the club to figure that out. It might be a good thing for you to reach out to them with Greg, Chuck, and go over there. Mm -hmm. I can do so that. What your concerns are, and then maybe they could, that can at least give them a clear picture of what, what Greg's concerns are. Because if I try to convey it, I might not get it right. Right. Yeah, and I don't mind doing that. I just wanted to bring it up so you guys yeah. were aware of what was going to happen before it actually happened. Yeah, because if it's a problem, we should address it. Uh, and you don't want to keep it going. Well, and it's early enough in the year, so maybe yeah. we could get something done about it this year. Yep. Okay. Um, I will. A I'll send you um, Steve Steve Gray's uh, contact information. Okay. I just I have a phone number. That's that's all. But um, yeah, I, I have I've never had any trouble getting a hold of him. No, Can I've known Steve for years. We okay used to be together all the time. Okay, um, Michael, can uh, I be included in that, Chuck? If you don't mind, sure. It, it, Absolutely. That runs right up behind uh, a number of places that are sensitive, sensitive wilderness areas for connectivity, and right. so it's a good conversation. Okay, it's a good place to start. Yeah. 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 If you're willing to, if you're willing. Yeah. Okay. I just yeah, made a note of that. I'll get a hold of Steve and see if we can set up a time and I'll let you know, Chris. Okay. Thanks, Chuck. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, no problem. Um, other than that, I guess one of the first projects we're going to do is finish up around the high drive up there, take that culvert back out and get the road dropped down. Mm -hmm. um, we've been, I've been talking to Paul Council about that parking lot up there. Yeah. I'm not exactly sure when that's going to come together, but um, mm -hmm. hopefully it'll dry out a little more. There's a lot of water in there right now. Yeah. It's a, it's a wet spot any time of year. So, yeah. 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 Well, we're yeah. definitely going to have to put a couple of culverts in. Mm -hmm. so, no two ways about that. But. Yeah. And I guess that's pretty much it. Um, okay. Yeah, I can't think of anything else. That okay. I, I just we're meeting with Alan tomorrow, right? Yes, at one one p.m. Yeah. No. Okay. And I'll I'll bring the um, the larger paper. Um, design that uh, Nate did for us. Um, try to maybe have it mounted on a piece of foam core or something so that we can refer to that um, as a group. Yeah. Okay. I was going to join up with you guys at one tomorrow. Where, okay, where, good. Where are, we, where are we meeting? We'll meet right in the village. Um, pretty okay. much right. Um, we could meet in uh, around the school parking area or by in front of the annex building. Actually, the annex building for the fire department would probably be the best spot. Okay. Because we might still be meeting when the school gets out, so. And Chuck, if you're gonna be there. I am. All right, um, Chris Davison is gonna give me a quote tonight. He's from Jay McDonald. Yes, yeah. All right, so Chris is gonna get me a quote tonight for the crushing costs. Cool. And actually this is for everybody, but. Mm -hmm. um, so he'll give us a quote for the crushing cost and a location where they can actually leave that material. They're not exactly sure where they're going to put the crusher. That's going to have an effect on the cost because they might have to move material that is going to be stored. Um, mm -hmm. It's a lot less expensive than us moving it off site. Right. But uh, he hasn't been able to give me a quote yet. So, but I think I'll have a quote tonight and then maybe we can chat about it. But I think it's gonna be a very equitable cost since we're getting material for free. Right. 
Right. Would the quarry be able to, is there a spot at the quarry where they could, I don't, I don't have no idea how big this thing is. It must be a pretty, pretty much a monster of a machine. Yeah. I would. Think, it's it, it's the size of, uh, of of a trailer on a semi, essentially. Okay. Yeah. You, know, you are more than welcome to have them put it at my house, <laughs> <laughs> and I will run through all the grout piles we have. <laughs> Thanks, Miss Brandy. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, it, I think it should be a good situation up there. Yeah, I think town is made of rock. I, I think it's a, it's, yeah. it's the right it's it's going to be the right price no matter what. So right, I, I, I think it's the right thing to do too. I think it's the right thing to do. Yeah, but uh, I don't have a formal quote yet. It's just been hard going round and round with between Swenson and 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 Jay McDonald. But um, right. but I'll have a quote. Maybe we can talk about it. See what you think. Cool. Go for it. Sounds good. All right. All right. Anything else with the town highway report? All right. Um, so briefly, uh, I think you all saw the email um, for the listers requesting an ex extension of time for the 2021 grand list. Um, there was a form that I left at the town office for us to sign. Um, I, I guess what they would like for us, um, and I can't re even remember how far out they extended it, but um, for us to uh, approve uh, extending the deadline um, for them to um, file the 2021 grand list. And, and I think, you know, the main reason this happens pretty much every year, and a big part of it is, is that we have a lot of property owners that are camp owners, and they aren't around here. Um, you know, right at the moment, they will be here soon, I would assume. Um, I know the black flies are waiting for them, but um, so it's, it's always hard for them to either visit a property or, um, you know, to get to to deal with, a, with especially with the camp. So they're uh, almost every year they request an extension on, on the deadline. Um, so it's pretty, it's kind of a routine thing that happens. Any any comments or questions about that from anyone? I'll make a motion. We accept the extension. I, I read it over. I don't remember what the time was, but I read it over the yeah. town office. Yeah. Do I hear a second? I'll second okay. the motion. All right. Yep. Any any more discussion about that <laughs> extension um, for the listers? I, I I I'm fairly new at this, so I apologize, but. This seems to be something that we do almost every year based on what I've read thus yes. far. Yeah, it's uh, every. So I was just wondering whether or not this deadline that we have set up has any basis in reality in the first place or whether or not we should be. It's the state deadline. deadline. It's a statutory yeah. thing. It's a statutory. All right. It's state sorry. mandated. Yeah. So well, that's yeah. why we got to do it. And then we're the only ones that can uh, extend it. Yeah. So no, okay. it doesn't make any sense. No. Nope. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was just one of those things. <laughs> I don't understand why we have a deadline that never works. Right. Well, so we'll have to talk to the state about that one, I guess. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. I apologize. I had the same question when I started. I was like, why don't we just fix it permanently? Nope, we can't. Yeah, we can't. I think if we didn't have so many camp owners, um, that it wouldn't be as big of an issue. Um, but but we do. Um, so, um, and it does create problems for the listers, so. Okay, so we have a motion. Any other discussion at all? Um, so all those in favor of uh, granting an extension on the uh, deadline for the uh, 2021 grand list to the, list, to the listers, um, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, we're unanimous, so um, we're done. Um, and I assume everybody got to look at it and, and sign it. So we're, we're good that way. And somebody at the town office can hand that over to our listers and or whoever, wherever it needs to go. This didn't sign it yet. I have to, I have okay. to sign it. I'll be there tonight okay. to sign okay. it. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So um, I thought maybe what we could do is quickly do the updates um, and then um, 
and then maybe tackle this personnel policy for a bit. Um, we'll work on it, you know, for 20 minutes or half an hour and, and make sure that we move into executive session at the scheduled time. Um, so um, briefly, the library roof repair. Um, as you remember, we put out an RFP and we didn't get any response. Um, so I did some phone calling. Um, I was provided with some names of some roofers. And we have two contractors that are interested in the job. Um, and I expect to be getting um, estimates for the project um, sometime this, this week. Um, both, I, one of them I know has gone and looked at this building and the roof and the other contractor was going to be doing that, but I haven't, um, I haven't checked within, in with them to see if they did that. Um, so uh, it does look like we'll get the roof replaced this summer. Um, the one contractor that I've been communicating quite a bit with is uh, that's all that they do are roofs. And you know, he says he can complete the project in a day with his crew. So, um, so things are looking a little better in that. And, and we'll, hopefully we'll have some um, estimates to look at at our next meeting to make a, a decision um, on that. Michael, can I just uh, make a make a point? You can, yes. All right. Is this is this an appropriate time to? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I've I've heard from a couple of townspeople um, who said, "Why can't we just all kind of get together and put the roof on?" Since that's how the building was was sort of put up in the first place. Mm -hmm. That we just got a group of people together and who are willing and put a building up. Mm -hmm. Why can we not just get a bunch of volunteers together and have the select board agree to put the materials into it and put a new roof on? And I think that the, I know things have changed since, you know, the, the time when the building was actually constructed. Mm -hmm. uh, but the question came to me from a couple of different people about why can't we just put a roof on as a community and not put it out to bid yeah. or bid on it as a bunch of volunteers yeah there's no reason we couldn't do that if we had a group of volunteers that you know had the i mean the putting the shingles on is easy dealing with the fascia and soffits and trying to solve the uh Rot issue is does take a little bit of expertise, um, knowledge at least of why. I mean, we can see why it happened and how to correct it. Um, I, I have no objection to that. My only concern is if we, you know, get into a can of worms when we start removing the shingles and um, find out that the subsurface is rotting, and you know, it can it can be, it could be complicated. Um, but somebody's got to organize, got to get a dumpster, got to deal be with an all organizer. The and the people that, that built the buildings um, are probably not going to want to get up on the roof. At, are the individuals you talk to, are they willing to volunteer to do it? I think they're willing to, at this point, help us direct it. Uh -huh. Yeah, because what I just, just fair warning, I've run into before where they are willing to have someone else do it. So you always be careful of stepping in that one. Okay. Uh, I was just, <laughs> Making the making the point. That sure, yeah, I got it. We did, just having worked on some volunteer projects, a lot of times the ones suggesting aren't the ones that want to do it. And what you're going to find out is you're going to have a. We may get a group, but finding someone to do the organizing um, and actually get up and do it, you'll have one or three. Who knows? I don't know. Might get a. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't haven't thought about it much, but there is an, just, another volunteer project. Um, <clears throat> related to the town and the school um, that's kind of in the works um, that we could kind of channel that energy with. Um, I don't wanna talk about it right at the moment. It's still, I, I could mention it briefly in, in an update. Um, in fact, I'm talking about it, so why don't I continue? Um, so um, last week um, we met with um, Justine Guthrie, the principal at the school, Larry Eldred, um, Don Turgeon, uh, Elizabeth Stratton, um, Susan Sawyer, um, the, 
the uh, school district um, has money to provide um, for materials to build an outside classroom on, on the school grounds. Um, and Justine was hoping that the town would be, if the school board provided the uh, materials, um, that there would be volunteers in town that would uh, help with the construction of this outdoor um, school classroom. Uh, Michael Sadler, who is on the Planning Commission, who is a, um, a landscape architect, um, was also at that meeting and he's already designed a, a classroom. It would, be, it would be set down in the woods off where the garden area is uh, within sight of the wetland. Um, and uh, I think Larry would be probably be the project director. He's, he's gonna be um, finding out uh, materials prices. So there is this volunteer project um, kind of in the works. Um, it would, and it would be, um, it would be a, an outside classroom for the school, but it also would be of use to the town. Um, maybe connecting it, uh, you know, different town functions could happen there. Or, you know, even if there was a wedding and people were having a reception at the town hall, they could actually uh, hold the wedding in this shelter. I mean, there's different possibilities for both town and school use. Um, so, and there would be this memorandum of agreement that if the town puts the energy into building it that, and the school board puts the, money into providing the materials that um, it would be a, a building of mutual use to both the school and the town. So there is this kind of volunteer project um, sort of in the works right at the moment, which we, so if people are chomping at the bit to volunteer to build something, or um, that's another option. Um, but getting back to the roof, um, yeah, I mean, Again, it's, it's having, who's gonna oversee the roof replacement? Um, and, you know, I know, I, I can't think of anyone right at the moment um, that, um, you know, well, I've- we got too, if we get it stripped and we don't get it replaced, then the building floods, we got insurance. I mean, it just- Right. I, 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 the, the who really matters. I mean, if you could ask if they can actually do it. Right. I've ran into some huge, I mean, in my field, I've run into some huge volunteer project disasters. Mm -hmm. I had a building, they stripped the roof and then they put a tarp on, the tarp blew off and did $50,000 damage to the building, yeah. where which we aren't, we will, it would be insured, but the town, you know, I don't know, it just, right. I got my. <laughs> I mean, I, I always like the idea of that. Um, Me too, yeah, you but know, it's just, people... it's hard to do. It's hard to do. And, and I think what we would need to do is if there was a key figure that had the knowledge and was willing to oversee the project, um, that would be pretty essential to me. And, and we do have, um, I mean, you could talk to these folks if you want, Chris, you know, we're not gonna get the bids until sometime this week. So right. we, we won't really be looking at them until the next select board meeting. So if there was a kind of a town resident plan that was a little bit more concrete um, and and people actually making a commitment um, you know that would help in the discussion I think when we when we go to look at the bids um, yeah fair enough so I will speak I would agree if we can I'll find somebody folks that I've, yeah. I've, I'll speak with the folks that have contacted me okay. um, and and communicate you know with the group mm -hmm. I think that we're just in a weird time if we were in a regular format maybe mm -hmm. these things would have been more easily discussed right um but we're not in that right. context mm -hmm. and we have very low attendance right mm -hmm. so right. um yeah. i'll do my best and okay. i agree that it should go out for bid absolutely okay. yeah and if we got a concrete proposal from someone we think that can actually do it we'll take a consideration then of it we yeah yeah then we can take advantage of it but otherwise it needs to go out yeah. So, so technically, you know, it has gone out. I mean, we sent the RFP out and we didn't get any response. So now the, the next step, we're sort of giving ourselves the okay to contact people and people who are interested, we're, you know, we're willing to take their, their bids and then, um, you know, decide from that. Um, I suppose so. that the only reason that, that I 
considered this even more than I would have before is that we have a fairly limited time scale. It has to happen over the summer. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and probably like July or early August is when you got to do it around six or seven weeks. Yeah, right. we, we have um, between when school ends and when school begins. Basically, right. So basically so the end of June months. to the end of right. August. We have, we have and, two, and, basically two months to get it done. Yeah. And the contractors that I've spoken with understand that. Um, and both of them say they can do it. I mean, this one contractor says that they, he can do it in a day. Um, and he has done the very seriously. I doubt, I doubt that very seriously. Well, he, <laughs> um, he's done a couple houses here in Woodbury and he did them in a day. Um, so I don't think he understands the damage that is. Yeah, if there's a lot of rotted plywood, a, that'll change, but. There's right. an extraordinary amount of rot yeah. on the margins of that. Yeah, so. anyway. Um, yeah. Okay. So we'll I'll I'll look for the bids from these two contractors I've been talking with and and um, Chris, if you could work on those people who, I'll, who I'll, I'll uh, do my best. Yeah. Okay. It's worth a conversation with. Yeah, them. there is. It is. Yeah. And um, and it's probably the same people who are willing to work on the structure that you just discussed. So. Could be. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Make sure, Michael, on your structure, they deal with the state and town permitting. We've run into some problems oh, yes. with the mobile classrooms that aren't handicap accessible, and they're not. You get a lot of issues with the school property. Yeah. It's a, it's on. It's actually on this uh, school district property. That right. This would be built. They would need a and, permit from our office and from the town. Yeah, and I think Larry was going to work with Justine um, to to do the permitting. Yeah. yeah, just not to get in trouble because you're, you're always the bad guy has to show up and say sorry. <laughs> right. Yeah. And and please remember that Justine is is outgoing. I know she is. She wants to have this project kind of in the works before she's gone. So right. So, yeah. you know, uh, sooner rather than later because yeah. she's she's perfectly wonderful. Yeah. To work with, but yeah. this is probably the time right now. Yeah. It's so. it's pretty much in the school board's hands right at the moment, or the school. You know, Justine. And Larry to um, to um, move it forward. Michael Sadler provided them with a a good design plan, um, and he's been working with Larry on the you know the technicalities of that. Um, so, and I think that you know um, Larry would probably get the materials and would be there to to guide the process. Um, and Elizabeth Stratton and the Friends of the Woodbury Elementary School, um, you know, she was pretty sure that a, a good number of, of those folks would be willing to pitch in on this. Um, and I know one of them, uh, Libby Higgins is, is a builder. Um, so we have some expertise there from her. Um, I don't know if we can schnooker Paul Council in on this too or not. He, he's, he might be busy with his own work, but um, so, so it's kind of in their court right now to get this organized and, and get it um, get it going. And then um, when it's all, and then we'll, the town will do its best to provide the volunteers. But I know, I know Elizabeth will be, be working on that. Um, so, and, and she's pretty, she's pretty good at that. So, so um, okay. Um, anything else about the, the roof repair? So um, moving on to the emergency generator, um, we do have a meeting tomorrow, um, both for a, a training um, and also for a site assessment. And there's a little confusion right at the moment. Um, I got a call that was on my machine when I got home from work from the person who was scheduling the site assessment at 11. Um, the person that I was talking with last week felt and has scheduled both the training and the site assessment to happen at nine. So, so I'm going to call some. I'm going to call Brookfield Services tomorrow at eight and try to figure out who's running the show there. Um, but we can anticipate somebody showing up at nine. A fellow named Scott. I don't know his last name to to do the training. Um, and the person I was talking with last year or last week felt that he could also do the site assessment. So, um, um, so that. The, and then we'll go from there um, as far as, you know, discussion with the, with the generator. We'll, we, we should, the site assessment will give us some dollar figures on any kind of changes that we, that we might want to do there. Yes, Diana. What date was that? Tomorrow. Oh, okay. 11th of May. Yep. 
I, uh, I can be, I, I will be there. Okay. And also, I know there was a question at our last meeting about the uh, propane tank. Um, it is underground. I didn't think I'd ever seen a tank there. Anyway, yeah, I called um, I, I, I called Suburban Protein uh, Propane, and they do a cathodic test on that tank every eighteen months. So they are um, overseeing and managing the um, the viability of that tank. Um, so um, I think you know which they should, they're the owners of the tank, it's their responsibility. I didn't really look into if there's any state regula regulations on, you know, there is for an underground tank that has gasoline or diesel fuel. Yeah, not for us because the propane company owns that tank. Yeah, yeah, so that's their responsibility but, and it does but there sound there are like significant ramifications if- Oh, of course, of, yeah, of course. Of the, of, if, well, I was actually thinking into the future, the plan that, that we have, hypothetically to sort of redo drainage through that area right that tank will not work uh-huh the underground tank what yeah they're probably going to have to move it but it's going to have to be moved okay and the generator is going to have to move all uh -huh. of it's going to have to move and that is not part of the plan that we have seen established right i don't uh, know if the engineer um Chris Rivet is aware that there's a tank there. I think he is. It's not on the plan. Yeah. Right. I saw the same thing. It's not on the plan. So that's right. something next time we talk, they're probably going to have to address it as part of that project cost. Okay. Yep. So and we should, we should, up. that's, that's, I, I think that's a significant thing. So okay. I think we should all sort of be aware of the fact that okay. we do have underground storage tanks. Well, what I, I will notify Chris Rivet of that. Um, in an email tomorrow. And um, also when we do the site assessment, we should probably um, let the uh, technician from Brookfield Services know that that's part of what we should probably figure on is having that generator or their generator replacement and the tank moved. Um, and I guess- to yeah, I'm not as clear about the generator. The generator is right next to that utility pole. It might not, but I know for sure the tank is going to have. We'll look at that tomorrow. I'm not. Okay. It's not so clear. Are you going to be? Are you going to be over there tomorrow? Yes, that's the plan. Yep. All right. Yeah. So I'll see you tomorrow. We'll, yes. Yeah. Okay. We can figure that out tomorrow, pretty much. I think. Okay. Good. Yes, Diana. Just for the minutes, what what project is that that might cause the generator to the have uh, to the storm water um, oh. um, management. Um, Master plan, I guess I'll call it. Um, I don't know what its official title is, but it's. Uh, good point. Yeah. Okay. So, so we'll discuss that some more with the uh, people from Brookfield Services tomorrow. Um, Michael, then, I want to ask the person who's coming out. I guess it's Scott. He said. Yes. Does. Does he have a knowledge of what the load is going to be on that generator if we include more than just uh, the annex building? Because Paul, is that correct that it right now includes only the annex building? No, it doesn't. It, it includes the school, the annex, and the fire station. Oh, it does. It includes yeah. all of them. And and they'll have to do a load calculation for a new generator. We'll have to do that. Okay. That's a that's part of an assessment. Okay, I just want to make sure that they understand. Yeah, I, I think if we're going to do it over, we might as well make it large enough to take the load that's there. Exactly. Right. right. Okay. And, and we're also planning on having the uh, town hall hooked up to that also. Yeah. Which is not a lot of load there. Right. Right. Yeah. It's just a distance problem. Yeah. And the wire is all there. So we, yeah, we, we should be able to figure that out pretty handily. Okay. Just making sure. Thank you, Jim. Anything else about the, you know, site assessment or the um, generator? And if there is, we'll talk about it tomorrow. Um, so the Valley Lake Road culvert grant, um, we did get that grant awarded to us. Um, so we'll be sending out um, an RFP for, um, uh, for the design work for the box culvert um, where that metal culvert is. Um, right behind the uh, new old store um, and between, you know, um, where the Kingsbury branch runs through by the annex. 
the fire department annex building. Um, and uh, I think, Brandy, what I'd like to do is tr um, try to do kind of a simplified RFP like you have put together for the mowing contract and the fuel contract. Um, and there's basically a scope of work that the contractor would need to do. Um, and I'm sure that any of these civil engineering um, contractors that we are going to be contacting will have all of the required insurance and stuff. But um, so I don't think we need to get into the heavy details of specs and and the nuances of the um, insurance, et cetera, um, for the for the RFP. So um, I guess we'll try to get that together. Um, and, and before you know, the next select board meeting and get that out, um, I'll work on that. Um, I know what the uh, what VTrans has mentioned that we'll need, and, and I think VTrans has volunteered to do the hydraulic study for us, uh, as opposed to the the. Uh, so that'll be one less thing to be in the um, that will be needed to be done by the um, design contractor. So oh, I'll just mention really quickly that I was at the VTrans meeting where we had these conversations mm -hmm. and that seems very reasonable, Michael, mm -hmm. that, that they will, they will pay for that aspect of the work. Yes. And yeah. Shana, so, Shana mentioned that they, Shana that they mentioned it. Yeah. So nice. I think it can be done without us paying into that directly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I haven't heard back on the uh, Cabot road resurfacing grant. Um, I think I and I think it's kind of out of you know Shauna's hands at the moment. She passes on those applications to the the higher ups and the VTrans um, um, agency, and I think they make the decisions. Um, I will probably send her an email this week, just um, asking if um, if she's heard anything about that particular um, grant application. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, how are we doing? We're doing pretty good on time. We're pretty much right where we would want to be for the personnel policy. Um, so my thought was to screen share. I did work on it for a few hours um, uh, since our last select board meeting, uh, trying to incorporate some of Jill Muir's um, comments. Michael, did you want to deal with the solid waste management district at this time? Oh, in yes. The, in the yes. ARPA? Let's do that before I forget. Yeah, Thank you. that's what I was thinking. Okay, uh, which I already had. <laughs> so yeah, um, so let's do um, the solid waste uh, management district um, representative <clears throat> first. So we do have a person uh, interested in serving as the rep um, to the solid waste district um, board. And her name is Eileen Wildman and um, she has been in contact with uh, the Solid Waste District to get a sense of what her commitment would entail, um, and she's still willing to do it. Um, so um, do I hear a motion? To I'll make a motion for Eileen Wildman as the representative of the Central Vermont Solid Waste Management District. Okay. Um, do I hear a, a second? Looks like we lost Chris at the moment, so I'll, I'll sec. Oh, here he yeah. is. Um, Okay, I, th I think he seconded it. Um, yeah. Second. So I'm trying to second it. Okay, there. Okay, I figured that's what you were doing. <laughs> um, any more discussion on that at all? No. Anybody? Oh. So all those in favor of appointing uh, Eileen Wildman to the to be Woodbury's rep to the Solid Waste District Management Board, I'd say aye. 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 Unanimous. So um, Eileen is appointed. Um, so, uh, Diana, what would you like? Huh? Hang on, I have a cat, I think, wanting to eat. So, um, go ahead, Chris, ask your question. I'll be right back. Diana, you sent out a, a, a link to us about a proposal of a, a grant program that would be part of Central Vermont. I don't remember that. Okay, I'll look at it again. For a while, Robin and I have been switching back and forth as far as whose name is on what email and what computer. So 
Okay, I'll take a look back through. Thank and, you. And figure out what that was. Could have had my name on it, but it could have come from her. <laughs> you remember that, Robin? I remember sending a email. No, the one I sent was a little bit off that. No. Okay. Okay. I'll take another look back. Okay. Um, thanks. So, um, this uh, the American Rescue Plan Act um, is. Um, Basically, the new act that um, I don't think it's been enacted yet, um, but each town um, is, is uh, in line for a fairly significant amount of money. Um, Woodbury, um, there's, there's the possibility potential of, of receiving $258,719 um, as our portion. My understanding is it would be kind of paid out in on a three year period. Um, there would be an initial uh, state um, um, initial payment to the municipalities uh, directly <laughs> from um, funds that are given to the state. Um, that would total $87,417. And then there would be uh, money given to the counties um, that, and they would uh, break up that money to the different municipalities within the county. Um, so, um, but the, what's in question at the moment is um, what towns, municipalities can spend that money on. Um, it has to be somewhat related to the pandemic. Um, I mean, I could quickly read this, but, um, so there are basically four things at the moment and nobody, those guidelines haven't really been set yet. So nobody really knows. Um, the Regional Planning Commission is helping towns with this to, um, in fact, I just got a, there was a more recent um, bulletin about this that came, you know, about at about 5.30. Um, it was about eight pages long. Obviously I didn't get a chance to read it, but I will, I will read that and I will also send it to, out to folks. Um, so they can check it out. And, um, and as I mentioned at the beginning of the meeting, um, Bonnie Wanager, the uh, executive director of the Regional Planning Commission, it, it would, um, is willing to meet with us in a select board meeting to, to help us better understand. Um, yes, they still got to issue guidance because it's pretty rough at this point. It's very rough at this Speaking point. with some, one of the uh, Cambridge select board members there, they're getting over a million dollars, but they're the same boat we are. They're like, what do we do with it? What do we do with it, right? Yeah. Um, so, so I think we'll just rather than even you know read this list, I just I just wanted to give everybody a heads up that this is something that is definitely happening, um, and um, sounds like they're still trying to figure out what they're going to let uh, towns, municipalities um, spend it on. Who um, who is our current um, fiber rep? Uh, Becky Brown. So if we dumped every penny of that into having fiber mm -hmm. and high access, we would- That is definitely, that's a possibility. One of the that things is, on the list. That's it's, on the list right now. I would argue that it should be high on the list. I agree. Um, yeah. Because that actually increases the capacity for our town to interact more broadly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but- I know we have other things too. Um, I think we could argue that covering a roof on a library that has town access could be used for some of those funds. But and one of the, one of the thoughts that I've had is, you know, it's obvious that post pandemic that um, the little room in the town office that we've used for select board meetings is totally inadequate. Um, it's too small, and we've been talking about work on the town hall. Um, the town hall could become uh, the new site for where town um, meetings are held. Um, maybe not town meeting, but you know, select board meeting, planning commission, um, et cetera. And some of this money could go towards um, fixing up the town hall. Um, we've been talking about doing that. I don't know, the fire department might be eligible for some of this. We money. are, because we a lot of it's toward emergency stuff. Again, I need to see the guidance. Right. 
because a lot of this money was either toward losses we had or monies we'd spent doing pandemic work, which we've done quite a bit of it. Yeah. Right. And, and I don't know if the fire department has a separate um, no, I'm, you're in, you're set up we as are, a nonprofit. We're already a 501c4, yeah, nonprofit, yeah. nonprofit. So I don't know if, if you, the fire department, as its own separate entity, would be eligible for certain amounts of. We money. are okay. Good. We received good. some funds through Hardwick Rescue through our emergency mm -hmm. uh, medical responses from back in May of okay. last year. Again, this this stuff is a little challenging to figure out until you get the actual guidance. It'll spell out. Right. what it is eligible for. Then you got to kind of look at what you have that kind of fits in the holes that they give you to go in. Yeah. So having some guidance from like either VLCT or the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission, I think will help us also. And well, I think um, they're going to actually issue guidance. The Fed, the government will. They are going to, yeah. You know, there'll be rules you got to follow. Anyone who's dealt with federal anything, there's always a set of Always a string of rules. rules. <laughs> always rules. Yeah. yeah. And I agree. I yeah. think that Paul's right. I think that the work that you all have done has been incredible and this is the time if that can be allocated appropriately yeah. it's time to make sure that our emergency management yeah we just got to see what it is and then how it fits there's yeah. no actual constructs right now correct so there's broad broad guidance but no the particulars aren't right. there yet and that's what i've heard from other select where i heard about this through some other select board people that i know in other towns that they're staring at this pile of money they're going to be getting and they're like, what do we do with it? Right. I don't know what to think about this. And that's just, I said the same thing. I'm like, uh, yeah, yeah it's, it seems nice until you think about the rules and you're like, then, then what? <laughs> right. Yeah. And they're kind of wanting towns to come up with ideas, but you know, until we know if those ideas are worth, um, you right. Know, putting on a list. Um, so we hopefully have, this will we, happen. We have, we have a little bit more immediate work that needs to be done before we worry about contributing right. to guidance of other yeah. issues. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So so I just wanted to, you know, basically let us all know that this is happening. Sounds like we already do. Um, and um, we'll see where it goes, see where it takes us. Um, okay, what, I think that's... I think we did it all, Michael. Now we're ready yeah. to look at the policy. I guess we, not can't, we can't put it off any longer, can we? We, have to <laughs> we do don't have a lot of time, but I mean, yeah. right. Okay, so um, I could screen share this and we, I could briefly go through sure. what I have done. Okay, so hang on. Let me, um, let me do that. Uh, okay. Um, okay. Oh, good. We're right where, so, um, obviously we're pretty much been working on the paid leave. Um, so, um, let's just start there. Uh, and let me get, I got to get myself out of the way here. Okay. If I could do this. Uh, where, how can I make this move? Hang on a second. Okay. So, um, what I've added, um, is mostly in blue. Um, and this is after going, uh, Jill Muir and I met for about a, an hour and kind of went through her changes. Um, and one of the things that she, she suggested was to um, simplify the language. You know, I had it broken down to hours per week for part-time for the town clerk, town treasurer, et cetera. Um, and she just suggested that we simplify that and get rid of all of that and just um, have part-time employees uh, would, would receive a prorated, um, basis based on what um, we're offering to the full-time employee. And um, she also suggested that we totally separate um, the uh, employees from the elected officials. Um, so that I've started another worksheet for the elected officials only. So in the actual personnel policy, we'll, we'll just be dealing with the um, 
uh, town employees, which is basically the road crew. Um, and then um, as an addendum to the personnel policy, we'll have the benefits for um, the elected officials. Um, so um, let me make this move. Hang on. Um, okay. So click on. Whoop. Michael, where do the other uh, employees fit in, like the assistant clerk and the. Uh, okay. Let me get to the like language here. Um, like that. Okay. So, um, yeah. Uh, hang on. Oh, oh, damn. Hang on. I just clicked the wrong thing. Excuse you broke my, it. I broke it. So let me get back to the screen share. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, uh oh. Okay, I lost the. Um, hang on. I think I eliminated um, the personnel policy. Okay, well, explore. Um, Oh, okay. All right, now I gotta get rid of this. Okay. So can everybody see it? See you. You can see me, okay. So we are screen sharing yet. Okay, so let me hang on. All right, get rid of that. Back to screen share. Open up that. Okay, can everybody see it now? Yes. Okay, all right, so let's get back to where we were. Slow and steady here, no more. All right, so Diana, this is a, in a this section in blue in accordance with Vermont law part time or temporary employee who is 18 or older and works more than 20 hours, 20 weeks per year and averages 18 or more hours per week during the year is entitled to paid leave benefits. And then benefits for part time employees are, are prorated all other part time employees working should say less than 20 weeks per year or less than 18 hours per week are not eligible for any benefits. Okay, so that covers that. Um, and then what we what we do with the benefits that we have offered in the past to the assistant town clerk or the assistant treasurer, we'll have to discuss that um, and uh, see if the select board is willing to extend those. Um, Okay, so um, so that pretty much sets the uh, this part in blue pretty much, and that state statute. Um, so that pretty much sets um, who will be receiving um, benefits. And there's um, and then I just eliminated all of this, you know, eighteen, you know, the stuff where it was broken down into eighteen hours a week or forty, um, and just have it uh, stated that it's prorated. Um, and then I did put in blue here just so that people know that the text referring to the town clerk and the town treasurer and assistants will be covered separately. Um, this way, when we have uh, new employees or, or just to even to give to our own employees, it's a little less uh, confusing. Um, so everything else is the same there. Um, So yeah, so in taking out all of that, the, the, the sentence that covers that is benefits for part-time employees are prorated and based on benefits for a full-time employee. All right, so, um, and then um, that's the same as before. And then these are Jill's comments in the, um, on the side. 
So another thing that Jill mentioned to me is that we are very, very generous in the amount of hours that we offer um, for sick time. She said generally um, what's offered to a, a town employee is um, basically, um, uh, it's more like 12 days. So basically a day per month of sick time is what's offered. So, and this is up to us, we can keep it at the 15 days if we want, um, or we can cut it back to what's the, the more, um, uh, what other towns, most other towns tend to do for sick time is offering a, a day per month. So basically 12 days per year of accrued, um, which breaks down to 96 hours. Um, so we allow, um, we allow 15 days at the moment. To, to accrue, right. What do they earn annually? Earn. Correct. Um, for wages. No, no, for the for the amount of days, is it, do we give a day a month and we let them build up to fifteen, and that's where it stops, or do we? No, um, they earn right now in the personnel mm -hmm. policy. They earn fifteen days per okay. year, and that's and as of, could, that's as, as of July one. Yeah, and they can, um, yeah, that's when the accrual will begin, and they can um, accrue. Um, See the maximum for part. Uh, let's see the maximum amount of sick leave that may be accumulated is 240 hours. So that's that's the amount total amount that they can accrue over time. Have we had an issue with abuse of this sick time at all, Chuck? Uh, no. Okay. I, I'm inclined not to do anything with it. But to, to leave it as is. Okay. I agree with Paul. I would like to okay. leave it at, at the 15. Okay. All right. Uh, I'd I mean, like I to leave that flexibility. Stop forgetting, but yeah. can I talk? Yes, you can. Oh, I'm sorry. We had one instance last week that they a part timer took used nine hours of sick time on a typical. Um, yeah. Just putting it out there. Okay. Um, so. Can I, be, I yeah, turn that back up, Robin? I think that that would be. I mean, I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, they basically the would have- uh, this day that The individual was scheduled to work nine hours? Yes. Okay, I guess I don't have, I mean, it is what it is then, and they had the time? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are part-time help, are they allowed 240 hours too? No, it would be prorated. So based on the number of hours they work, let's say ballpark figure of 20 hours per week. So they, they basically can, uh, the maximum that they can accrue is 120 hours. Yeah. yeah. And during the course of the year, they would be eligible for, um, I guess, technically, again, based on 20 hours, seven and a half days of yes. time. Yep. For the year. That's, that's the same math that I just did, so. Okay. Okay. So, so I made a note of that. We'll keep okay. it at 15 or 120 hours. Uh, okay. So, um, that's the crate that hasn't changed at all. It's pretty much written in stone. So, um, the other thing that I, um, again, to simplify this, um, crossed out all the kind of configuring for part-time and the town treasurer and town clerk and just basically wrote uh, vacation time for part-time employees shall be prorated so okay. based on the full-time uh, schedule yep. um, so, uh, and i think and then I, I know let's see i think we've already discussed the part where of uh, you know requesting this time um maybe it's up ahead of us here i think we went might have gone pad we were talked about a form to fill out right yeah that's probably coming up so personal time um again same thing um okay here we go okay so over time um 
that's all all the same. That's all the same. Um, all days are the same. Okay, so um, and Jill met, um, recommended that I cross out insurance and just have benefits, um, which I haven't done yet. But, okay. um, and again, the town clerk and town treasurer are kind of taken out of the, the language. That's why that's crossed out. Um, she recommended that this should be just um, deleted, um, which I will do. Um, I think all of this, again, you can just see where I've crossed out town clerk, town treasurer, um, or any of that. And then um, there is one part that I did add straight from the VL, VLCT um, model personnel policy. Uh, let's see, it's at the end of the, um, so employee discipline, this is something that we put in the uh, personnel policy yeah. the last time. And then there's another section. So that guidelines on how to provide uh, discipline and warnings um, for performance, um, which pretty much is similar if there were different drug uh, issues or, or substance abuse issues, I guess I'll say. Um, so then um, Jill strongly suggested that we add this, um, and this is directly out of the VLCT model uh, personnel policy for an employment uh, employee termination process. Um, so I've just added that, um, and I haven't you know, made it put in the town or, or um, incorporated some of the guidance, but I think, um, she strongly recommended that this would be in here mostly to um, cover the town from any type of um, post uh, termination uh, legal challenges um, from an employee. Um, so I think, I, I do think that this should be a part of the personnel policy. And, um, no, you know, I can send this to everybody and, uh, and I, if I haven't already, um, and we can, um, you, know, you could take a look at it. The other, um, so that's, I'm going to get out of the screen share, um, unless anybody has any questions or wants to look at any part of it that. No, just if we have that, we should review it, maybe get ready to vote on this at the next meeting or the meeting after, you know what I mean? Right, yeah. Yeah, so um, I will... this, I'm trying to see if I have a copy of it. Michael, can you send me the cop? Can you send us all the copy that is the most updated one? Yeah. yeah. The one that we're I looking at is the most updated. And I th I think I might have sent it to you yesterday. Yeah, I might as well look in here. All right, let me and I also sent the model VLCT policy. Yeah, that I have. I have the model. Okay, so, so maybe I didn't send this one. I, I thought I, I did. Think we, I don't think we have that one, Michael. I don't think I okay. Have that modified okay. draft. All right, so well, I'll send that. I appreciate um, that. That would, and then, you know, that would one question, fun. one question I had um, for the select board and, and, and anyone else really here, um, you know, I've been looking at the model VLCT policy and it's really nicely organized. Um, I'm very tempted to just kind of transform our personnel policy into that. There's a good, I know when Skip worked on the revision um, a few years ago, a lot of what's in the model policy is in our policy. He he did tend to edit and a little bit. Um, if if you like that and that's what you want to do, I don't object to that. Okay. Um, I just know we want to get this in place sooner than later. Right. Yeah. I mean, my thought was to um, take that model policy um, and then, you know, the different specifics that we have as far as the paid leave time, um, you know, take that from our own personnel policy and put it in there. Um, I'll take a look and see what, how much work that actually might I be. Just I don't, don't over, over commit yourself. I don't want to reinvent the wheel here and I want to make sure that, um, 
that well, I know a lot of model policy has been well vetted in the legal system, which is why sticking with the more vetted language is a good idea. Right, right. And we don't yeah, start actually entering, was, a, entering a pothole somewhere. Yeah, it was put together by the VLCT right. uh, um, lawyers, um, and they have vetted the um, the uh, 2018 version. So that every, anything that's was formally there that we haven't changed um, is good as far as the lawyers are concerned. Um, and I know Jill is a kind of you know pretty much aware of what is legal and what isn't. So and her. Uh, suggestions. Um, she, you know, she's aware of that. So if there was anything really glaring that we had done, um, she would have already warned us about it. But um, all right, so I'll, um, it, it's a busy time of year um, for me, um, but I will. Um, Michael, it would really help if you just send us that draft. Okay, I thought I had, so I will. I'll send it to you. Yeah. Um, and, and, uh, and then we can support you. Okay. By right. doing some work, I'm okay. already. Yeah, and Brand Brandy has um, fixed the uh, that pay scale chart for us. Um, I saw that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So thank um, you, Brandy. I have to figure out how to delete the old yeah. one. <laughs> so, I haven't quite figured that out yet. Um, um, okay. So. Uh, Is there any so, input on that chart? I, 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 I looked at it. It's fine. I just now I now I have to figure out how to put it into our personnel policy. How to get rid of the old one and right. put the new one in. I'll and you'll, the names once you're ready for that. Are we going to add any other titles? Uh, good question. I guess we'll have to look at what's there. Um, I can't think of anything new that we would have um, at this point. Is the, the mission to have a full-time third person as of July 1st, or is that too soon to? Um, I, I, I think um, that could be a, a, a mission. It could happen. I think if it doesn't happen by July 1st, it's not a big deal. Um, I think we just got to get our, our bid out to get people applying yeah. for it. And so then probably we got to go through the interviews and. Yeah, having it done by July first, um, it is possible, doable, but it but it may not happen. Right. So the reason I say that is is that the benefits kick in July one. Right. So we On know. The, the, um, yeah. But wouldn't those be retroactive, Brandy? They could. They. Yes, they would be retroactive, and in any new hire that we have, there's a six month probationary period right. too. Right. So. Right. So so I'm just referring to the, the positions now for the, the two part timers that if, if it starts July 1 as our, our benefits kick in boom on July 1 that um, those are then offered to them. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Immediately after they're hired, they do. They don't have to go through. They don't have to earn them the first year like. A no, they're, they're automatically accrued. They add automatically. It's kind of yeah, like yeah. Um, she's talking about the existing part timers. They're going to earn their benefits starting July first if we haven't replaced them. I see. Right. I see. Yeah. Okay. Because I was going to say a new a new hire shouldn't be getting benefit the first day you start. No. No, it's not about new hires. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. About I, the two existing. About the existing. I think our goal will be trying to get someone in, but it, we might not get that done. But we should start working toward that. Yeah. Yeah. I think we'll get our job description and we'll advertise for a yeah. position and see yeah. what we get. Yeah, that, know, should be a, that should be a high priority for us. Yeah, very it high should, priority. Yeah, even you know, and we can start the the bidding process, the RFP, or put yeah, yeah, you know, just putting out a putting out a employment opportunity. Yeah, the personnel policy doesn't have to be finished. Um, nope. You know, it would nope. be it would be good to have it finished by the time we're actually interviewing someone. So well, because I'd like, my concern was also making sure that the problems Chuck had last June aren't gonna crop back up with some of the salt solutions are in that policy. Yeah, yeah, they're in it as it is. So, you know, we could so that's just- part kind of, of why we need to get it in place to, right. to resolve that. So we don't have a repeat of last spring. Right, so if it, if it looks like, you know, trying to convert to the BLCT model, <laughs> Um, if that looks like it's just going to really slow things down, we'll just get this one done right. as it is. We've been working on this for a year and a half. It's time yeah. to yeah, get we'll it just get it up. done. Um, 
and uh, get it to VLCT for the lawyers to do the final vetting and have it in place. In fact, that's probably the best. Yeah, so I think like Chris said, if you get us the copy you have, we'll, we'll, we'll be well versed in it by the next meeting and we'll be ready to vote on it, I think. Wouldn't you say, Chris? I think so. If, okay. I, if, I can, right. if I can, if I can make my way through it with the, with the draft changes that are in there right now, I just haven't right. seen. Them. Yeah. So I'll do, I'll do my due diligence and I'll, yeah, I'll do the same. I'll get it read through. And if I had any comments, I think we can work out the couple of little areas that might exist and just be done with it. And okay. And if, if you had the time to quickly look at the VLCT model policy, because there, I, are, some I got things, it. So I, yeah, I there well. are some things in there that, probably could or should be in there. Um, mm -hmm. And um, if I had a little, and you could even send me, you know, if you look at it and you say, well, I think the, um, um, this certain part section of the model policy should be in there. Um, what, like what's the term for when you kind of have your whole family working for you? Um, nepotism. Nepotism, there's a nepotism section in there. Um, Maybe that should be in there. We don't have it now. So if, if you see things in the model policy that that you feel pretty strongly should be there, uh, okay. let me know. And it's just a cut and paste thing to, um, yep. to get it in. I think, I think we can work through that and maybe have it ready for you know, come up with the final vote on yeah. this maybe next meeting. Yeah, that's, that'll, be the, that'll be the plan. For next meeting. Yep. Yeah, because that should, again, another high priority along with getting the, you know, I think also a topic for the next meeting is to talk about uh, getting the hiring or the whatever you call it the advertisement out for people yeah. can apply for the job yeah we should get that process started because yep. Yep. that shouldn't be too difficult we already have that job description we do yeah yeah when I mean, we can move that forward i think fairly efficiently yep just okay. get it done all right so um looks like we're pretty much ready to go into executive session um do i hear is there any other business at all? Any Anything else that anybody would like to bring up before we move into executive session? Yes, Diana. I just wanted to mention, it looks like there are three weeks before the next meeting. Oh, maybe no, not. No. Um, no, we're good. This is the 24th is the next one. I was confused by Memorial Day. I'm wrong. Yeah, and then there will be three weeks. And it will be a three week wait, yeah. which is a good, good time to get that bid out. We'll have uh, applications to review at the next meeting after that. Yeah. Okay. Any other business at all? Any other? I'm good. Okay. Where are you going to, how many different locations do you want that advertised done? Well, well, as many as possible is my opinion, but I don't know. <laughs> right. There, there's I also, say, I would say go as broad as we can. I, kind of yep. agree, I, I agree with Paul on that one. I think that we should. Yeah, and VLCT, I think they also have a listing for- They have a listing on VLTC, uh, CT too. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Anything else at all before we go into executive session? Go ahead and turn the TV on. Okay. So um, do I hear a motion that we, um, the select board enter into executive session citing one VSA section 313A3, the employment of a municipal employee. So moves. Yes. Second. Any further discussion? Uh, all those in favor of going into executive session, uh, say aye. 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 And who are we inviting, Chuck? Uh, inviting Chuck, yes, thank you. 